No one can separate us from the love of God, except the free will a sheep has to turn from him mm -hmm. and leave. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Is there no limit to the hubris and egos of some American bishops? It has arrived at a place that is beyond galling. 59-year-old Bishop Joseph Tyson of Yakima, Washington, who has rarely demonstrated any friendliness or respect for pro-lifers in his diocese, has done it again, and this time his insult goes far beyond the borders of his own diocese. A pro-life mobile medical unit that drives around and places itself in front of abortion chambers to provide pregnancy testing and ultrasounds for abortion-minded women had a fundraiser this past weekend to raise money for a second unit. The nonprofit pro-life outfit is called Image Point Mobile Medical and has enjoyed success with the mobile units helping women change their minds who are going to kill their children. They secured the speaking services of notable pro-lifer, author, radio and TV host, Laura Ingram, who is also, and importantly, a convert to the Catholic faith. And she converted to the faith right in the middle of the homosexual priest sex abuse scandal in the early 2000s. So get this, the bishop, Joseph Tyson, had his staff send out a notice to all the parishes and the priests that they were not to advertise the pro-life fundraising dinner because Laura Ingram was the featured speaker. The bishop's reason? Quote, Laura Ingram, while having a positive pro-life witness, is a strident opponent of many of the immigration positions held by the U.S. bishops. Closed quote. You cannot make this stuff up, folks. And for all of those Church of Nice head in the Sanders who keep babbling on that there is no crisis in the church, explain this one. Go ahead and try it. Here is a well-respected Catholic convert who has carried the torch for the faith in many dark, secular media caverns coming to town to help raise money for an outfit trying to save the bodies of babies and the souls of their mothers who get slammed by the bishop. Did we miss something? Or isn't this what Vatican II said the faithful are supposed to be doing? Answering the call to holiness, personal holiness, and serving as yeast in the culture. And, a do and on a dogmatic teaching of the church, which Ms. Ingram 1 billion percent supports and upholds, she gets slammed by a successor of the apostles for disagreeing with his wrong-headed, poorly reasoned, non-infallible, bad, personal, prudential call about a non-infallible teaching of the church like immigration. If every bishop in America didn't call Tyson privately and tell him he's off his rocker on this one, then someone needs to call all of them and tell them they're off their rockers that need to go back to Theology 101 and this time actually get formed in the authentic faith, not a bunch of 1960s and 70s hippie liberal personal opinion theology courses taught by angry ex-nuns and soon-to-be ex-priests. This story is so over the top, we actually had to double, triple, quadruple check it again because it didn't seem right. We looked at Ingram's Twitter feed. We did all kinds of digging because we couldn't believe a bishop would wig out over this and actually take action against a faithful pro-life Catholic trying to raise money for a pro-life group. And after all the checking, sure as eggs are eggs, that's exactly what he did. He slammed her because of her support for immigration laws when he tries to insist that a nation's immigration laws should be broken. I wonder if the bishop has a wall around his property or locks on his doors. I wonder if you can just walk right into his office or house without permission in defiance of trespassing laws. This idiotic notion that immigration laws are somehow evil and as evil as abortion is appalling. It isn't Catholic, it isn't right, and it needs to be called out and opposed. If you saw last week's Vortex where we presented the final interview with Dr. Charles Rice, you'll recall that he predicted two Catholic churches in America, in effect saying one would be like a state church and the other the authentic church. Well, we say, bring it on. It's already the case anyway in practice. Let's make these bishops stand up and make a profession of faith either to the state or to God. We've seen all this before. The English Reformation comes to mind, where bishops refuse to back church teaching in favor of going along with the state to feather their own nests, and then they turn on the faithful. How much longer, Lord, how much longer? Is there a way to vote a bishop out of office? This being an election year and all, just saying. And as a brief segue, if there was ever a tremendous Catholic bishop to vote for, it would be the great St. Patrick, 
whose feast day is coming up on March 17th. Over the weekend, we began a flash sale on these authentically Catholic St. Patrick's Day t-shirts and sweatshirts. Click on the link and help promote St. Patrick with this honor this year. The flash sale ends Thursday to guarantee shipping by St. Patrick's Day, so be sure and get your order in before the sale closes. We need good bishops, we need to recall the memories of good bishops, and bad bishops need to be called out. God love you. I'm Michael Boris. Thank you.